Hello there, welcome to Davy Robson's podcast, and uh, I'm delighted that today was. I've got the legendary Mick Sorby with us. How you mate? Well, we've come and done thank you. No, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thanks very yeah. much. I've been looking forward to this one. Yeah. So, uh, 50 years as a doorman. Yeah, 50 come. years, long time, isn't it? 50 years is a, yeah. it is a long especially a town as rough as Arlipo. Yeah, I, uh, I can honestly say I enjoyed it. Yeah. I yeah. did enjoy it. Yeah. Well, you've got a, a book out as well now, eh? Aye, had a poor born and bred one. Yeah. It's um, just about my, li my life and about things what happened to me through my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's done pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. Jamie Boyle's made a hell of a job of it. Oh, he's, he's yeah. a, a fantastic author, yeah. Jamie Boyle. Cracking lad. I mean, yeah. if you don't know who he is, he's, he's got books on Lee Duffy. Yeah, um, just about everybody who comes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, got, he's doing really, really yeah. well. Three uh, documentaries on Amazon. And, yeah. And he's a top bloke, but... Um, like you say, Mick, it's really good to have you on here. Yeah. I'm really pleased. Um, what, I, what I'd like to do, Mick, like you say, 50 years as a bouncer, yeah. you've been to prison, things like that, but I'd, I'd like to go back, you know, right at the beginning, if it's all right, Mick. Well, from being a child? Yeah, from yeah. being a child, where yeah. you're from, where you're born. And right. I was born in in Sandzone Crescent. Mm -hmm. um, no, I wasn't, I'm telling you, I was born in Millbank Road and we moved to Sandzone Crescent. Yeah. And then um, we just... Uh, yeah. Uh, my dad wasn't the best of people. Yeah, he didn't want. I could have, if I had to pick my, I'd pick the better one. Yeah, yeah. well, I'll, I'll touch up on that. Was yeah, on the book, and I'm sorry to say this, Mick, but ch chapter one, I, I read it, and Jamie Boyle's done a good job, and yeah. all I can describe your upbringing was 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 fucking brutal, mate, and it was. Yeah, I mean, some of the stories that you know, him coming in and like. We'll, 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 see, we'll if you don't mind, we'll tell a couple of them, you know. Yeah, you tell anything you want, I'll yeah. talk about anything. Yeah. I mean, one that stood, stood at me was, he locked you outside in the court. Oh, yeah, it was on the Boxing Day. What happened? On on uh, Christmas Day night, yeah. my mum and dad had gone out to the Greenland Club, I think the one. Because that's where they, where they always go there. Yeah. And uh, they never come in about four o'clock in the morning. Well, the fire had gone out and I'd fell asleep, but all the kids were in bed. There was, there was uh, nine of us. So I, I, I put them out of bed. Anyway, the fire went anyway, he come in full of drink. And he was, he was in a while, I don't want to upset him anyway. He woke me up, he said, the fire's out. So I lit the fire again for him. Then he took me in the kitchen, gave me a clip, took all the clothes off me and pushed me outside. The snow was about two to three inches deep. Fox. And it was, it was really cold, mm. which you well you can imagine, can you? Yeah. And the only place I could get to get warm was in the dog kennel with the dog. We had a German Shepherd called Ned. Oh God, the smell of the next morning was unbelievable. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. And I mean, then, so you get nine, all together nine years, that's a big family, yeah? Yeah, big family, yeah. So yeah. How, how was your dad like with the others? He was all right. He used to, see, when I was born, my dad was, he was um, in the army, he was in Egypt. Mm. And um, when he came back, he didn't think I was his. That that was the top and bottom of it. Mm. You know, he used to say, you're not mine, you little bastard, things like that to me. But it, it, that... The words didn't bother me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'd, obviously, with being a kid, I was thinking, why is he like that with me? Yeah. And then, as I got a little bit older, it got, it got a little bit heavier where he was beating me up all the time. But most of the time, he used to do it when my mum, well, a few times, I got the West Coast times when my mum wasn't in. Mm. And it was when my mum had gone out. And just for, like, I'll give you an instance where I was like, if he'd come in from the pub and he was sat at the table, because the dinner table was in the front room where we lived in the Sands End. Yeah. If he hadn't dinner, if he didn't look at it, he ended up wearing it. Do you know what I mean? He, he was just uh, yeah. he was just a funny like, fella, that's all, just... Like, you say, like, back in them days, I mean, it, it wasn't right, but it was common, you know, like... That's right, you're the, right there, the, yeah. The husband would yeah. go out on a Sunday afternoon, he'd, yeah. he'd have a good skin full in the club, he'd come home and yeah. dinner would be on the table and miss would say, you burnt me fucking puddings, that'd be yeah. on the wall, and back hand at the missus, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> kids would get checked, but now it... it, it He'd go to court for it. You'd go to jail for it, didn't you? Definitely, but like, it's what your dad done, you know, it was, yeah. it was beyond brutal. Like. Know, I, was, I was only a kid, I was still at school, I was like, oh, so you take me to the back garden, the, we had like, a bit of a grass bit on the back garden. you take me, he'd fight me, knock me out, leave me there, knock out. Fuck, how, Just, old, how old were you then? 13, Jesus. 12, 13. Okay. And then, but the, the thing, what was worse about them, the way he treated my mother, you know, yeah. she... She come in one night, and yeah. she come in, and she was limping. I thought, oh, he's hit her again. 
and I thought, what did I get a Dutbury again? I'm going to hate him properly. This is what was going through my mind. I never, I never done it, and I explained to you later on what, what happened. Yeah. And then, um, when when she turned around, she had, you know, the aisle shoe was stuck in the back of her head. Where did, where did, where did, Fuck. And then uh, they start arguing, and anyway, she ended up going to hospital. But they, what was over, he said he seen her looking at another man. Fuck. She had, she had nine kids. Jesus. You know what I mean? So you, you, was your mum, like, loyal, well, loyal to them all? Over, yeah, I think yeah. in them days they were, weren't yeah, it? Yeah. There's nowhere for them to go, yeah, was there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I say, that there was another story that that's in your book. Um, I think you, your dad had died, you're out, and you didn't have anywhere to go. Yeah. And you went to your nana's for. I went to my grand's, yeah. yeah. I went to my grand's, and she fed me, let me have a bath. She said, Look, you stay at night. Anyway, I said, No, it's going to cause no trouble. So I went back to the lock where I was staying. I went up the next day to get something to eat, and she had a bit of a fat lip and a, a bruise on her ear. I thought, well, that's not my granddad. He's old. little fella. He wouldn't do that, do you know yeah. what I mean? I said, what's happened? She wouldn't tell me, but my auntie Anne told me. She said she believed really daddy's been around and give her a, give her a clip there for having you in the house. Wow. Yeah. Fuck hell. But yeah, see, your dad, your dad had a lockman as well, didn't he? Oh, yeah, the <laughs> today for that. Oh. <laughs> this, this is my job, right, on the morning. I used to get up before school. I have to go water all the plants mm -hmm. and do a bit of weeding. This is for an hour before school. Then I'd go back, get myself sorted out with school, then on my own to school at the corner allotment and start all over again. This was seven days a week. Well, for Saturday and Sunday it was torture. I was there all day. Okay, no. And uh, just uh, But he used to let me out to the garden, I said, the garden. He can borrow him for the weekend. See, so yeah. get, was he getting backhanders yeah. as well, was he? I don't know about that, like, but. <laughs> yeah. Take us an old paper, read ready, yeah. Read that. Now you used to have you going down on the beach as well, collecting sea coal and that, didn't Yeah, you? getting coal, that was for the house, for the allotment, and for his couple of friends on the allotment, so you have to get it for them as well. Fucking hell, so... If I didn't get none, it was out the player, you haven't tried hard enough. Really? Yeah. Jeez. And no. you can't guarantee it's going to be there every day. Yeah, every, yeah. Well, not every, I didn't go every day for coal, but it used to be two or three times a week. Jeez, yeah. so you, and if you didn't come home with any coal, you'd yeah, get it? Yeah, Bashed and sent to bed. Dear me. Yeah. So was he aggressive to the towards the others then? Was he or? not as much as me? No. no, he was aggressive. He, he was a bit. Do you know? I've never known that man to have a fight with a man in his life. Never. Fucking hell. never. Just women and kids. Yeah. Do you yeah. Mean? Did so did your mum used to back you up and that? Did she? Oh, a few times when he's on the floor and he's, he's bashing me. She, she's dabbing on top of me to stop me getting the kicks. Do you know what I mean? Doing something myself. That's and she so wasn't a very big woman, my mother. No. She wasn't big at all. So he sounds like he was. He was a, a bully a coward really on his yeah right. he was yeah that's exactly right is it there's yeah. another one uh story i know i know i'm going back to um yeah. your childhood but i honestly think i need to tell these out because your childhood i think shaped you up into the person you become later on in yeah. life you know because yeah. you're ready for what you want it to become yeah but um there's the the story where um you had you polishing your shoes oh yeah. yeah he was going out on the night and he said polish my shoes so do these slip on shoes things. Well, that was about that big. He's a big fat fucker. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I polished them, right? And I thought I'd done a good job. Yeah. I was only a school kid. Anyway, he found a little mark on them. And he kicked this in the ribs. And, oh, I've never been hurt so much in my life. But, uh, you know, if, I don't lose a bro. I think they were fractured in my ribs. Fucking okay, But do you know when you're a kid, it's a very painful thing to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, me, me friend, Ralph Young, his mother took me to the hospital. That's how I knew what was wrong with him. That's yeah. how I knew. Damn. Yeah. So did, was this just every every every? There wasn't. I don't. There was many days mm. in the week. I never. I didn't get without getting a clip off him. There wasn't yeah. any. If he went out on a drink, and my mum went out, I used to go to bed, and I used to get under the bed. So when he looked in, he couldn't see me. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It was fucking. No. It's, it's another sad part to make. I mean, it, 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 it trashed me in the boat. Yeah. At Christmas time, when you're just a kid, and the part in your book it says that you, you dreaded to Christmas. Yeah. Because it was, you know. Yeah, because there's more drinking them, more violence with me. Fuck, you know. Yeah. I mean, what a life to, for a kid to be trashed yeah. about Christmas, you know. Yeah. It was just, um, it was just the way it was. Yeah. You know, you know, I'm telling all these habits, you know, but there was other kids who went through it as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Not just me. Yeah. Like you say, what we, we think of earlier on, yeah. it, it did happen a bit back then, yeah. you know. It, do you know what we'd done one day to my mum? They'd come in, they'd been drinking. And then um, they'd been to the Raglan, I think. They'd come in on the night. 
Det er sent op, ikke? Og det kommer ind og tager ud. Anyway, he walked past there, and so much he said, I can't remember what it was, I always said something, she had probably out of sleep. Then he just pushed her, she fell on the floor, and he picked her leg up, put it on his city like that, and fell on it like that and broke it. No, like you see on the wrist, like, 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 like that. Yeah. Jesus. So what, what, what do you think it was that made him take what? what, what I, I think, think he must have got bullied when he was younger. Do you I think, think that's, that's all it can be in it? Yeah. Because he never... <laughs> and like you say, he's never... I can't even... really call him dad. Do you know, I don't like calling him dad, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. So, uh, how old were you when you, you left home then, mate? 14, I went to live on allotment. Did you? Yeah. What, a proper allotment? Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, that called Ronnie Stead's allotment, he let me stay on there. Yeah. Yeah. God, so what, how, how long were you there for then? Yeah, about three months. Yeah. And then uh, I moved to um, Station Town, New Wingate. Oh, yeah. And uh, old railway carriage up was there, I started living that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. Then yeah. I come back. And I'd start work then for Ray James on the call. Mm. Um, it was Benny Cox call, but call yeah. Ray James on it. And then um, I got myself a flat on Lancaster Road. Yeah. It was already there. So what, what was it like when you first left home? And that was a relief sort oh, of thing. Oh yeah, honest. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, yeah, but it was. What was it like when you left home for the others? You know, your mum and them was still, things still going on down there. Yeah, I went. I had to go back again because he, I've seen my brother John, and he's dead now. My brother John. Somebody. Yeah. Um, he told me to do his big Alice up again. And we could call Alice my mum, but yeah. we called him Uncle Face, but Alice whom we were talking to. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's, he's bashed her again, he said. Okay. So I went back, I thought there's not much I can do about it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when I got to about 17, I thought I've had enough of him. Mm -hmm. Do you know when I, I don't know about your boy, Eddie think he's not going to beat me, he's not going to beat me. Probably yeah. with your boxing, I'm going to yeah, beat yeah, him. Yeah. So we were in the Ragnar. And he, he wouldn't he wouldn't sit near me because he, he just didn't like me. And I was sat about five tables from him. And my mum came and sat with us and I and I said to her, <clears throat> I said, I'll take her home, because I only live a couple of streets from her. I said, me and oh last night I was with Pat then. I said, I'll I'll take her home. So off he goes down, walked her down. No, I wasn't, I was with Dot then. Mm. And then um, walk walked her down. And he opened the door and he said, Girin here, you you slap her or slag or some prostitute, I can't remember what he called her. I said, boo, it stops now. I said, get out there, you big fat bastard, I'll fight you now. Mm. Anyway, he wouldn't come. You know what he said? He said, you know, I'm old and I'm disabled. Yeah. Yeah, that was his story. See, yeah. Right. Went in, shut the door me. Yeah. Yeah, wouldn't come out. So I just, the door was locked, so she shot the letterbox. I said, eat it tonight and I'll be back tomorrow with you. <laughs> yeah. So, the, yeah. so, like you say, you, you left home, you're living in the allotment and yeah. that. Yeah, what were you doing for work back then, Mick? Well, when I was a kid, I said, this is what I used to do. I did the shrimp net. I used to go on Middleton and get shrimps. And I used to sell them to the Chinese. It was the one, you know where the railway station is? There's only one then. All right, I used yeah. to buy them. As long as they were alive, they'd buy them off me. Yeah. And then I used to get a bit of coal and beach, sell that. Then on, on, on tonight, for that jump bed, first thing on the morning, I used to sell the milkman, Dilbury's milk. Mm -hmm. That was about half past five on the morning. And then on the afternoon, after I'd been doing my shrimp and that, and a bit of coal, I'd have a lad called... Um, Mr. Jukins, um, I forgot his first name now. Um, mm. Mr. Jukins, anyway, he was a, yeah. the coal man. And I said, I'm going to do the coal on the afternoon. I, did, I, did, I was doing right, I was getting, I was there in a more week than my dad was. So you worked, you worked hard, yeah. so you were like, didn't you? I mean, yeah. that, that, that's a lot of work now. Yeah. So how are we then? Let's get the fun stuff, Mick. Right. The doorman. How did that yeah. start? Right. How would start? I was out, I was in um, uh, a nightclub downtown, we'll call it. Um, ah, fuck. <laughs> Not living this one. There's not many, isn't there? Yeah. Anyway, I was in that club, and Danny Andrews was there, Dorman. Right. And he said, he, I knew him before that, that, you know what I mean? And he said, he fancy job. I said, Not really, no. I'd rather go for a pint. Mm. Anyway, it was a bit trouble started, and I had a little bit of a fight, and I thought, Hey, it's not bad. This. Well, that's when you first night. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I, I was work, working, and he got me the job there. Then Danny Block would come to work with us. Yeah. Um, we had a couple there. We had this big lad. He was a big, blunt lad. And a big fight broke out because there was always fights with the column coming down. Yeah. That's how it was then. Yeah, you know coming I mean? down, yeah. Yeah. And, and then it was, it was fun. Do you know what I mean? But, but this big lad, right, I thought, oh, he'll be able to do the job all right. Oh, I went in the toilet when the fight started. Really? Not me sat in the toilet. Yeah. yeah. You, get some, you get some like that, yeah. don't you, I suppose? But, uh, do you ever work with any lads who you got bullied up with and went, oh, fucking, I'm working with them, you know, who, was, who 
there wouldn't be much help there and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah do you have, have to name them? No, you don't have to name them, you don't have to wait. Uh, yeah, don't we'll have with a couple like that. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what happened one night. I'll tell you a couple of funny things first. I had about 30 doormen working for me, and then um, I was working in uh, Churchill's. Yeah. He phoned me up from the Irish bar, Roy Yugel phoned me up. He said, Mick, can you come down? He said, they're dancing all over the fucking tables, the bar and everywhere. I said, where's your doorman? He said, is your doorman? <laughs> so that was on the New Year's Eve. Yeah. yeah. I knew it down the same pub he phoned me up. He said, Mick, can you get up here? He said, there's hell on. He said, the pool table was turned around. Anyway, when I went up, there's nothing there. They'd all gone. We were fighting. Yeah. I said, where's the doorman? He said, still running down the A19. <laughs> <laughs> so... Say you done well as a dormer, obviously you start yeah. getting a bit of a, a good a name for yourself yeah. sort of thing. So how did you end up was you, you end up taking over all the doors in Hartlepool, didn't yeah. you? What happened was Mickey Blackwood and Philly Chauvin started and I think I think uh, there was three of them. There, there was Dan Thomas, Mickey Blackwood yeah. and Philly Chauvin. They started an agency off of the dorm because they were sick of two dorm when they started getting beat up. So it was good start it was, it was a good hell of an idea. Anyway, um, Denham pulled out because he, he, he wanted to do the pub bit, he wanted to work in a pub mm -hmm. and be like the manager, do you know what I mean, which he'd he done well at it. And then um, after a few years, Philly Tobin had to pull out because of his asbestosis, he was poorly. Right. And I took over Mickey Blackwood, then Mickey Blackwood got sick and he pulled out so I just took it over myself. Mm. So I enjoyed it, I, I, I can honestly say that door work is the best thing that was ever brought out for me. Yeah. I really did enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Did, you say you, like you, see, you must have been in some scrapes for like 50 few, years yeah. on the doors. Yeah. It's, I've had a few wins. Especially Harley <laughs> Paul has been looking yeah. as rough as what it was. Oh, I've had people waiting outside and run me over. Yeah. You did get run over, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what happened there? What was it? I, I, there was these three lads in work myself, and I'd give one the back of my hand. I'd, I could have knocked them out, but I didn't. I just mm. said, get out, go on, fuck off. Anyway, <laughs> I, I come out, and um, I, I was walking down. I lived in um, Study Road then. Oh and yeah. I, it wasn't far from church, you just yeah. through the houses. I was walking along Stockton Road and I heard this car revving up. I just said, that's a little boy racer, sure enough. That, I just kept on walking, didn't even turn around. Next thing, boom, it was in the back. I went down. But it went, it went, as I went down, I turned over and it went over my chest, the wheel. Yeah. It was full tie print on my chest. Like a oh, <laughs> and then the reverse back over me, but the reverse over, over this leg. Uh, it didn't break and but I limped for a bit with it. And um, I think we do muscle damage, that's yeah. what I've done. And uh okay, no. well, I got I got up, right, after I got it, because the, the, the panic restored the car. I couldn't get the doors open, I pulled the wind, the wind came off my hands. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh deal. Yeah. So uh, what what other injuries have we had, other stories? I mean I, I seen that you 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 went to work on a door and I think Harley Paul playing Darlington. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Darlington, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, well, you have to tell us this. On the night, right. Eric the boss, Eric and Linda were the boss of um, the nightclub where I worked. That was Casper's. Yeah. And then um, Eric said to me, We've got Darlington playing tomorrow, Mickey. He said, I'm going to open. He said, I'll be, get a few quid in. I said, he said, Will you work? He said, I don't need you, just to open the door and shut the door. Yeah. I said, Oh, yeah, champion. I said, Yeah, I'll do it. Because he said, I'll give you the same rate for a couple of hours on afternoon, what are you get on the night. I thought, Well, I'm happy with that. Anyway, I get uh, to work. I've been there about half an hour. And I heard this glass smashing downstairs. I thought, what the fuck's that? So I went down, look, and they're getting the shorts and then throwing the glass. I said, what well, you like? I don't know, what the fucking yeah. drinking goes. I said, hey, it stops that. Anyway, I thought, I was looking around. I thought, which is, which do you think is the best one? If I would get it in first, the best one. To go for the biggest yeah, one straight away. Best, I thought, let's see which is the handiest. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'd just get into them straight away. Anyway, I went back upstairs in the stag. That's when I said, the fucking lot is get out going. I've had enough of yours. And I think I said the wrong thing because they all just piled in. Just give you a talk. How did you end up after that? I was only there. I went. I was in hospital. <laughs> Is that a story? Like, didn't you go to hospital and come straight back out? And came come back on the night to work. Yeah, yeah. come back on the yeah. night. Jesus Christ! Yeah. So you had a couple of shares ripped off your back then Four. in the day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, all the way, I wish Philly on them. I you tell you this one because they tell a bit the night. Yeah, we'd all been working in Casper's on the night, and then there was this big old carry on. Loads of people fighting. And we'll get some all out. Mm -hmm. I mean, all I had left was half my shirt down this side, the sleeve down to there, and the collar just was gone. Yeah. And the police came in and said, we're covered in claret. Yeah. The police come in and said, <coughs> hey, there's been a, been a report, there's been a bit of trouble in here. I said, I haven't seen that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so what was it, what was your, um, 
yeah, you know, you with the police, how are you, how are you with the police? Not that they used to give you grief over there. Yeah, the, yeah, I don't get on with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I've seen that things happen. Like, uh, Shabble Flower to me, pal. He had the uh, Olivero's Pizza Shop. Mm. I used to do a bit for him. Yeah. And uh, on the night, you know, the night will come home when I finished going yeah. ahead and starting there for him. And uh, he's been in me when they pulled me over. Do you know what I mean? Right, Michael, what's your name? You know, just to wind you up. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, the assholes have no time with them. She used to be, uh, like, a bouncer in the kebab shop as well. What? Well, yeah. You want to see the wages they got there? Yeah. I used to go there from when it should have two o'clock. I used to get there for about 20 past two by the time we got them out where I was working. Mm. Going there and staying there till four, which is not a long time. Yeah. And used to, I used to do three nights a week and used to give me £500. Damn, yeah. that's good money then, isn't it? Yeah. Good money. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, then we're, uh, you know, we've got the door and you're running the doors. And I was, yeah. How many men did you work for you? It, Average of 30, but over the holidays, you know, like Christmas, it used to go to maybe 40, 40-odd. 40 yeah, 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 yeah. So you had a good few doors then yeah, as well. All, all good lads as well. Yeah. I say I know a couple of lads, I mean, some of the associates, you've got, you bet, some top lads. So should you name a couple there? Yeah, yeah. I've, worked, I've, uh, I've, I've done a little bit with Terry for Paddy Conroy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've also... Richie Osley. Yeah, he's a. He's, I've he's, got to give him a mention. Yeah. He's a top bloke, Richie. Oh, he's, he's a good friend of mine. He's he's an yeah. absolute dime. He's go back a long time. A long time, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's he's. I, I, yeah. I've known Richie for a few years now. I was uh, with Kev Bennett with the, the Bear Knuckle. Oh yeah. That's I went down a, with yeah. them, and uh, Richie asked us to come down, and that's the first time I really met him properly. And yeah. he's a dime. He's a bloke. nice lad, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Dry he's, sticks, but he's a good yeah. lad. He speaks highly of you. Yeah. Really, really does. Yeah. Really does. We worked for a long time together. That was his best man. His first win. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he's good. Yeah. Did he, uh, he didn't pick me next time, like he did last time. <laughs> oh, he's a good lad. Yeah. Um, see, um, regular with uh, Biff as well, haven't you, Shawnee Armstrong? Yeah, I know Sean, yeah. yeah he's, he's a nice elder lad. Yeah, he's, he's coming on here. He's going to he? yeah, do gonna... out for you, that kid, you know? Yeah, he does, he does a lot for the kids as well. Yeah, that's what I like about him. Yeah. He's really doing well with the kids. Yeah, he is. He's doing yeah. well. So, and his fox, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he's, he's got there, uh, he's a brand coming out, isn't he? Uh, yeah, his t I've got a couple of t shirts on, yeah, yeah, yeah but he's, we've been talking, me and Biff, and he's, he's yeah. going to come on here and have a good, have a crack, and so that should be good fun. Yeah. So, we've got uh, right there, you know, running the doors now, and everything's running well, and that. So, when you're running the doors, did you actually work or did you just pop around and see the boys? I worked at first because the wages weren't that clever when I first started, and um. As the wages went up, I decided I walk around to make sure we're all all right. Yeah. And um, I was walking around this night, and the couple of doormen they said to me, "Mick, you're just being bashed." I said, "Oh, what?" They said, "I called Philly Bailey." Oh yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he said he wants to fight you. I said, "All right." Anyway, I was talking to Richie, and Richie told me, he "said Mick, he can fight." Yeah. He said he can fight. Was he like a football hooligan sort of? Was he? Yeah, yeah, something to do with the blue water or something. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Anyway, we ended up, I went in the army and he was in there, but I just got a phone call saying, come up the lane, there's some trouble. Well, it was only over the road from the army. Yeah. So I come out and I, I think he thought I was running away from him. I've never run in my life. <laughs> and he said, uh, he'd come marching over the lane because he'd seen where I went. Mm. He said, fucking run away, have you? I said, no, I haven't. Mm. I said, I have not. Anyway, we end up getting on, getting it on, and um, anyway. well, he's dead, and I don't like it. I'm not calling yeah, him. Yeah, no, no, I, I no. did beat him. Yeah, I yeah, did beat him. Yeah, and um, yeah, but he's had a, he had, I know the name, and he had quite yeah. a bit of respect in the town, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, quite a lot, yeah. Yeah, and and a few weeks after, um, somebody said, uh, <laughs> "Philly's been on the boat." So I thought, oh, the only thing I do. I went on the Sunday, I knew we'd be in the Rovers on the Sunday with Dwayne and all them. Yeah. So off I goes in and he comes straight over and he shook my hand, mm. which I thought was brilliant. Yeah. You know what I mean? We sat down, we had a talk, we had a point together, had a talk. And you know, I really did like him. Yeah. I'd yeah. Be honest, I wish we'd never had the fight. Yeah. I really do. Oh, God. Yeah. You know, the first right hand he gave me, though, he broke my jaw. Did he? Yeah, he broke my jaw, yeah. So you can have a go as well, yeah. Yeah, oh, you did. Yeah. 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 I mean, like you say, yeah. of your, your, your career as a doorman, you work with some big names out there. I mean, Duffy has yeah, been worked, mentioned in there. Uh, I, I never work. I work with Viv Graham. Yeah, yeah. But I've never worked with Duffy. Yeah. Um, I've worked with um, oh, some good lads. Mm. Some really good lads from up that way, Newcastle way. Yeah. yeah. How were you, how were you with uh, Viv Graham then? How, what do you think of Viv? I liked him. I did like him. Mm. Yeah. 
He'd fight anything, you know. Yeah. He wasn't bothered. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he was a he was a big yeah. unit as well, wasn't he? A big yeah. bloke. And you, you get people saying about him and Duffy if you had a fight. Yeah. I'm I'm pleased to never. Yeah. I really am. Because yeah. the two well respected people. Yeah. And, and I know a lot of people say Duffy's not necessarily but I, I respected him. Yeah. I met him a few times, he never said not, nothing wrong to me. Yeah, yeah. He was right as real with me. Yeah. 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 He had a, he had a an hell of a reputation in Middlesbrough. Same yeah. with Viv and Tyneside, you wasn't, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. But, um, a hell of a reputation. But well, you know Viv, right? Terry reached for me and he said, Mick, Viv Graham's just formed this is about four days, four days before the new year, before he got shot. Mm. He said, Viv's just formed this, Mick. He said, well, me and you go up. He's got a big problem up there where he lives. And I said, I can't because of the work I had on the door, I said, I can't just leave my dorm by the self, and I couldn't, do you know what I mean? Mm. And I said, well, after we get the alders over, I'll come up with you, I definitely come up with you, but yeah. he got shot on the night, Fucking on the New Year's Eve, well, about four days after, Terry, yeah. Terry phoned me. He didn't phone me, he phoned Terry. Yeah. yeah. Well, they never, they say it's a big mystery up town, it's new ass, isn't it? They, they, who, who done it, they've, you know, yeah. like, I don't know if they've ever come no, 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 it, yeah. no, no, it'll come out in the end, but... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, there's loads of people, people point the finger at different people, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't know, don't it? Yeah. I haven't a clue. Because all he said was he had a bit of trouble, he didn't tell us who, who was it, you know, he never said. Yeah. 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 I, heard, I, I, I heard the stories and I heard, you know, he got shot, I think it was three times. Yeah. Um, I reckon one of the holes was, he could fit a big melon in from the top of his thigh. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure I heard the story, he was, he was crawling on the floor, you know. Somebody and, said that, yeah, I heard he, that story got, as well. he got up saying, yeah. I want to be on my feet, don't let me see yeah. like this. And, um, yeah. It's it's sad, you know, like you say the same with Lee yeah. Duffy. Yeah. It is, it's a shame. Yeah. But, uh, but go, go on, man. You sword, you die by the sword, don't you? Yeah, that's it, it is, yeah. it's a shame. So, right, where, where are we at to now? Yeah, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you another funny thing around us. Terry phoned me up, Terry Rich, because we used to do a lot together, me and Terry. Mm. And he said... Mick, there's a little job there down at um, London. Um, there's two tonne of blow there. He said, shall we go and take it? I thought, two tonne of blow, that's some wages, that. I said, yeah, right, well. Mm. So about half a dozen, two dozen, half a dozen went down. We've got the MIM service station just outside of London. Yeah. And um, there's a big massive roundabout there. So <laughs> we pulled in to get something to eat. But it was easy. We thought there were rascals going around with watches up. Now I'm trying to sell watches. Oh, yeah. But they weren't, they're busy. They? Right? And, and there was a gun under my feet here. And, and the, uh, we got our food, and there was this bloke sat, say, I don't know, say, well, your front door is. Mm. But he kept looking over Terry, said, I think he fancies you. I said, I'll break his lips. <laughs> anyway, we went out, and he just sat there, read, just pretend to read the paper. Anyway, he gets out, he gets in the car. Pulls up the service station on the roundabout and there's a busy waiting like that for us. Fuck yeah. yeah. That's what was all that about then? What? Well, they thought, they thought we were Irish, they thought we were terrorists. They yeah. think they think fuckers couldn't understand our accent to the Irish, do you know what I mean? That's, yeah. Anyway, uh, apparently it, it means service station. I know they've got cells there, but they're anti terrorist cells and the truck is in there. And then um, we was just sat there for a couple of hours. Then they come along to interview me mm. and took me out and they said, What are you doing down there? Going to see the change in the guards of the Queen. So he said, yeah. I was deserved. I definitely wasn't going to tell him what we were up to. Yeah. And um, <laughs> he said, well, were you buying your, going to buy your wife a souvenir? I said, probably, yeah. Yeah. Mm. He said, well, I've just checked your property there. You only have £2.70. Oh, I said, no, I said, I'll tell you what you do. Give me some money, I'll go back home, man. Anyway, he said, right, go back. He said, that's how quick my interview was. Yeah. Right. Anyway, I'm sat there. And the door opened. And he's the busy who was watching me behind the newspaper, right? Yeah. And Terry, Terry said, Mick, sign away for the gun. He said, fine, sign away for this gun. He said, we can go. I thought, it's fine, yeah. I said, it's not a war. <laughs> so I'm not signing nothing. He said, Mick, it's sorted, sign away, bit. And you can go, so I signed him. I said, right, off his go. Yeah. How he managed to sort that out, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So you wouldn't, uh, I like I explained, uh, I mean, most people who watch this will know Terry Riches, but yeah. there'd be some we always watch this so do he was like Hartlepool's uh, he was like a local what would you describe he was a local hard man wasn't yeah, he yeah a good fight yeah, yeah. yeah. he, had a, he, he had a bit of a reputation good, good boxer yeah yeah. I always remember him years ago driving around in his black Sierra Cosworth oh yeah, with, uh, yeah. on his licence plate what was it Bad, bad, bad 13 bad 13 yeah. yeah but to say you and Terry were quite close weren't you yeah for a, work, uh, for a lot of years yeah and um, 
I think it was when he, he got himself on the heroin then I wanted to break away from him, you know, because I wasn't into all like that. Yeah. You know, and the most I'd, I took was a bit of whiz or something on the night, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that wasn't very often. Yeah. You said I was tired, used to keep me going the night, because mm. some nights I started at six and I was there at four or five in the morning. So you'd keep, keep yeah, it going sort yeah. of thing, yeah. And um, we just we just broke away because there's no way I was in. I'll tell you what I'm right, I had a son who got addicted to the heroin. Mm -hmm. And um, and Terry was, he was in a town, I thought, I can't work with him if he's taking that and tell me son what I thought one, you know, for being on it. So, yeah. I, so I started to break away. Oh, so you, yeah, you complaining complaining your son was on it and then, yeah, 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 I'm with you. And then, I hadn't seen him for a couple of months when he phoned me up about game at sing, you know. I'd, oh, I'd, yeah, so we do want to touch up on that, yeah. man? Yeah. Where am I was? I was in my lock doing a bit of digging. And before I went, it was Terry. He said, Mick, can you give us a hand? I said, what are you doing? He said, uh, I bet I hadn't seen him for 10 weeks before this. Yeah. And he said, damn it, owes me £74,000. I thought, oh, it's a lot of money, that. Mm. He said, will you fight? You know, I'm going to fight him. Will you fight either Buffalo or... I forgot your kid's name now. Mm. Buffalo or anyway, there's two of them. Oh, well, not about the game, but normally only one with them. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, I just said, "Yeah, I had choice for that." <laughs> I see after two thousand pound. Yeah. Needless to say, I never got it. Okay. No. Um, anyway, Paul Carr was in the back of the car, mm. the shotgun, with a cricket open the ball, jumped out, shot him, shot him in the legs. Okay. No. And you didn't know anything about them. Well, no, I didn't. No, yeah. I didn't know he was getting shot. Yeah. I thought Terry was having a fight with him. Yeah. That's what I thought was going to happen. And you were just there. And I so was going to fight either Shinder or Buffalo. That was the other one, yeah. Shinder. Yeah. And uh, when when he shot him, give Gamp, well, when we pulled up, you know, give Gamp his deal, we said to Terry, I want to Terry, let's get it on. He was wanting to fight him. And Terry, I don't know, he was a bit half hearted. Yeah. And uh, that's like I say, Kazi shot him. And yeah. um, we fucked off. And. Uh, okay, no. We'd, Went on the run sort of thing. Yeah. Well, quite a while we were on the run, about, about six weeks, I think. So, how oh, has that been on the run and that then? Uh, well, I miss my family because I'm a proper family man. And yeah. I really am. Yeah. Um, and that, that blew me. And uh, we are just going from one place to another. You know, we couldn't stay because it was on the news. Do you know what I mean? We couldn't yeah. stay anywhere. Must have been frightening. Uh, well, we had to throw our phones away so we couldn't phone home because we didn't find a way around the signal off your phone. Mm. And then um, we just we got all right, but we start to uh, start to dislike each other a bit. Me and Terry do yeah. that because he was getting full of his own all the time and not making sense. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And uh, okay, no. I would, well, I was glad when we had ourselves in, got sorted out. Yeah, yeah. At least I could see my kids in the wipe again. Yeah, so yeah. The running's over and done with. Sanded so yourself yeah. in. So he handed himself in. Obviously. You went to court. Yeah, we got reminded straight away, which was obvious it's going to happen that. Mm. Um, then, oh, but then we did get Duke and Chambers. Mm. And uh, what about three weeks, I think it was. Then we went to court. Then we got reminded again. Uh, Gems, you know, Gems still up in court, you know, and said it wasn't us. Well, they're still, they're still chargeable. Yeah, and Gems still up in court and said it wasn't us. Um, do you know that man? What a, what a good man. Yeah. He came to visit me in prison a few times to keep me pro all right. And then um he gave me a handful of money when I got out. Oh yeah. So what 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 did you get then for your sentence? What was um I didn't I got seven seven and a half year, but I done three year three 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 year I never got some of my man back. I think I done three year mm. three three year nine month. Fuck. So you got fucking seven year for just turning up, being yeah. a backup sort of thing. Yeah, and you, you know the only evidence you had against me was an old lady said I seen a man with grey and a grey beard leaning on the car. <laughs> that was that you. was it. I've okay. seen the lady since, and okay. I give her a hug and I told her I don't know grudge. But you never, uh, like you say, you got the seven year and you never opened your mouth. Whenever I, never, I wouldn't make a statement, I wouldn't give evidence in court or nothing. Fucking okay, no. I seen what it done to them. They were both in court and saying, oh, well, we're error addicts in cars, we didn't know what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, they're not making a fool of me like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At least I kept me pride more than they did. Okay, anyway. no. I mean, fair play to you, it's a long time, isn't it, when you, you haven't really done anything wrong? Do you know what? When I went, when we got sentenced and you have to go down to Bridewell, 
-hmm. and I, I was sat there and I'd give you a visit and I will ask him and I said look you know divorce if you want it was hard for me to say that yeah and then um, she said you silly old man just get on strong you've got life get on and do and get yourself back home yeah. I was made then yeah she stand, yeah. stand by as well yeah oh. I never went across the doorstep while I was in prison oh, that's, never, that's a, that's never a, missed a visit yeah. Yeah. yeah so she thinks a lot of you than my mate yeah eh? it goes both ways I think a lot of her yeah, yeah. good stuff mate good stuff yeah. so you're in prison where did they send you I went to home house first, mm -hmm. then down to Pentonville. Pentonville, that's a long way from home, isn't it? Oh, that was a funny old jail, lad. You had white men with dreadlocks, shit one, shit one, one. Yeah, I was just saying, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> did you? Yeah. How, how did you call in prison then? Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Do you know when we went to home house, right? We went in, and there was loads of bits of things, what the, because they had on the radio that we were going in, that we were being sentenced and you were going in. There was lots of bits of things on the bed, like biscuits, phone card, baggy. Like that, like a wick like to call them. Oh, yeah. Um, tea bags. Honestly, it was great, man. Oh, it's all like how the lads are looking for yeah. you, looking after yeah, you. Yeah, it was very nice of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. So, uh, I hear another story as well while you're in, uh, in jail. You, you bumped into the canoe man, eh? Oh, yeah. He was my first personal officer. <laughs> and then um, he said, uh, he, I, I'd been in a couple of days and I was getting an air coat. And uh, I got my air coat and he came in and he said, uh, How are you finding it? I said, well, I don't like it, if that's what you want to know. <laughs> and he said, uh, he sat down on the bed and he said, is that what I can do for you? I thought, oh, I'm not going to be a schoolboy. Yeah, well, does he want you back up or something, do you think? Or? Uh, no, well, I didn't know what he wanted. Yeah. I thought information or something, there's no way. Yeah. That, I just thought I'd beat my tongue off. Yeah. Anyway, he said, uh, how do I do that? So I thought, I'll try him out. I said, yeah, the champ on his shake and he gave me some head and shoulders. Next day it was there. You got your head and yeah. So we sat yeah. talking, and he, this, uh, about a week or so went past. He kept popping in to see me. And I thought, is this our cool gear or what? Mm -hmm. Anyway, he said, uh, I've got a job for you in the prison. He said, I know, I know you're Amic. He said, I've got a job for you. Mm. He said, what we'll do, we'll go across to Spain, not Spain, France. Get the money off them, put them in the water, and we just set the fuck alight with a minute. He said, fuck them. So he must have been raking about for money then, wasn't he? Okay, now. Yeah. yeah. How long did he get at uh, Darwin then? How long? Did, did he get four years somewhere for the insurance thing? Something like that. Oh, dear. I felt so his poor fucking wife, because I know him, he was made her do that, you know. Yeah. His, well, his, his kids as well, weren't they? Yeah. Was it, wasn't he hit in the walls or something? I they? don't believe they didn't know, you know. Yeah. I don't, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they'll have just walked in the house, wouldn't they? Yeah. If it would, yeah. And the, you know, but, um, so you're back here in prison and that my mate. How did you adjust then? Because like you say, you went from being a, a busy doorman, like a bit of high life sort of yeah. thing, partying all the time, then straight into prison, right? Like how did you how did you manage? Well, you know, it must have been a It was uh, a big change for me. It was a big yeah. change. But you just you've got to adjust, if not it cracks you up. Yeah. You've got to adjust. And I, I, I after my wife said that to me at the Bradwell, you know, she just said me, you silly old brother. Yeah. So just get on with it. Yeah. She said, I was thinking, you've got life, get it done and get home. Yeah. And she said, I'm telling you now, behave yourself. I yeah. thought she's going to finger come out like that, behave she yourself. She told you out, yeah. yeah. Good on her. Yeah, fair yeah. play to mate. Yeah, fair play. And then uh, I got myself a job on the cleaners, mm -hmm. then on the savoury, four oaks. I look forward to being a seed <laughs> And um, then I got this CEO from reception came to see me, said, Do you want the job on reception? Is um, reception orderly? I said, well, I'm all right. I'm, I'm here, get me food. I'm right, it's rain. I'm, on the server, he said, I'm offering the best job in the jail. Yeah. And then the little thing clicks in, why? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then uh, the lad who was already working, they, on the night come and he said, I'm offering me job when I get out on the mic. I said, aye. He said, take it. He said, I'll give you a good report for open prison. Mm -hmm. He said, take it. He said, we met with him down there. He said, they never ask me now. They don't ask me no question about what's happening or nothing. As long as you get on my work, they're happy. Mm -hmm. And I said, so I took it. Poor, I put about two stone on. Okay, yeah. No. yeah. Well, so the fattest reception all you've ever had. <laughs> so did time fly be a fear or did it was On it reception did because you're down there from about eight in the morning till sometimes six, seven at night and you're going home, shower and going home. Go you down there. Get get in the shower and you just want to sleep then really for the next morning. It went fairly quick. Yeah. Yeah. And it got me to open prison, it got me to um Kirk Levin and that. Kirk yeah. yeah. So it was it must have been I said when he got sent down to um, Pentonville, it must yeah. be quite hard for the missus. She didn't visit me when I was down there. Oh, she didn't go down no, that way, yeah. Too far. Too far, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. So. And I come back when we collect the visits and they let me stay back in home house. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's just only down the road, really, that, isn't it, yeah. as well? So. Oh, yeah, she, she put. Well, she was really good to me while I was in prison, all that stuff. Like, yeah. Come on, come mm. on, come on. Good. I suppose it makes your time a little bit easier knowing you've got. Easy, yeah. yeah. And I've got a letter every day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, look forward to them letters, you know. I can't write very well, you know, so my letters were sometimes only one sentence. <laughs> Hi, mate, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, so, you've done your time in prison, release. What was that like? When I got out. Mm. It was great. There was an old marina when I went to prison, no, didn't I, marina? All right. Uh, when I went to she said, oh, that's the look at this marina. I thought, fuck, that's amazing, this. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember it, how middle now it was. Yeah. Like, old boats tied up with a bridge string in that. Yeah, them little shed yeah. things and that over yeah. there. What a nice place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Nice walk down there, isn't so, it? What was a bit hard for me? Just to the noise. Yeah. With the noise, outside noise. Yeah. That, that was a bit hard for me to just to that. Yeah. Yeah. And she said to me, oh, we'll go down to this Matland place, so off it goes down. And I've been in it for. And then, um, what do you th who do you think was the first person to bump into? Oh, no. Uh, um, what do you call him? Dressed as a woman, what do you call him? Uh, oh, uh, Lawrence. Lawrence, yeah. Lawrence, I, yeah. Uh, I got in the door and I bumped straight into him. I didn't know him. Yeah. And I said, oh, I said, what the fuck's that? <laughs> for the, the people who yeah. watch this at home, um, in Hartlepool, there's, there's a guy called Lawrence. There's a good story about him, actually. Yeah. Um, He's a right cracker jack and he's yeah. um he's no longer with us now, he? No, he's dead. Yeah. yeah. But he used to dress up with women's clothes and yeah. Ian Muffs on and Crystal Palace t shirt shouting <laughs> to himself and that and yeah. yeah. But it, there's a story behind him, is there? He's Robert Maxwell's Supposed to be, yeah. yeah. He That's looks a bit like him as well, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, acts a bit like him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For, um, fancy bumping it no mate. Yeah, the first person I bumped into the car, <laughs> walked into the door and boom, face to face like that. I said, I didn't say why I was there, when he got past yeah. it. So I said, said, who the fuck's that? She said, oh, that's just Lawrence. <laughs> yeah. So you uh, you come out of prison, things are getting back on track. So what about the doors? Was you, didn't you send them up or something? Yeah, Dave, Dave Gass and Terry, and Terry, this before I went to prison, they bought them. Oh, bought they, them. they bought them yeah. before you went, yeah. high. Yeah. 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 That's another good lad I, I got to know, Dave Gass. That is a mistake. Yeah, yeah. I met Dave a few times through the yeah. boxing side, yeah. and that is a nice bloke. He's genuine. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nice guy. Yeah. Um, so you, you sold up there, do you regret it or? I did, yeah, because I loved the job. But yeah. at that, that though, I was, I was getting too old. I was 50 odd year old then. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like you say. You... No, I was more. I was 60. 60. No, I wasn't. I was 58. 58 when I sold up. So I'm 73 now. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. It's sad. I mean, I've got pals who worked on the doors. And like I've seen them, and they said, Well, I'm working on the doors, Davey. So, oh, nice one. I've seen them like a couple months later. So, he's still on the doors. I went, Fuck that. It's too much hard work, too much grief. I mean, four, yeah. and for you to last 50 yeah. years doing it, yeah. fuck me. Mate, that's good. Just, yeah. But you are looked at it, right? If you're a milkman, you trap your fingers. If you're a bricklayer, you trap your fingers. If you've got a clip on the door, just uh, look, pat and yeah. pass it Yeah, yeah. So, like you say, you're out of prison. You said, what do you do for work then? What were you doing? I you couldn't get a job at first. And then I went over to Stately. And Lenny Arnsey had it. Mm. Um, and I said, I said, Lenny, I'm busting for work, mate. And he said, right, well, he said, jump on here, Monday. On yeah. me. And he did, he did look after me. He was oh. there a while. Yeah. And I ended up running the security for him in the end. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. So yeah. you sort of going down, the, you know, you went down some funny paths, but you'd, yeah. you'd come out of prison, as I say, the missus is... I had a word with you, tell yeah. you what to do, she's oh, keeping yeah. me on the straight and you're getting a, pro you're getting yeah. a job and that now. You yeah. know, so I was quite enjoyed doing the work, to be honest. Yeah. I really did. All it was boring, but I enjoyed it. There was this machine there, and you press the button and fill the bag up, and you run this thing across and you push the bag off on a conveyor belt. But if you don't want to tell shift, it's it quite yeah. boring. Yeah. But it was a job, and I was looking at my family, that's what was important. Yeah, it? good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but it was a bit different from stood on the doors and four yeah. tools and things yeah. like that at Lighthouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the um, they started to get a little bit problem problems up there, and uh, Lenny had a talk. He said, "Mate, you said don't you fancy doing the security?" I said, "Not really." I said, "I don't want to get into trouble. I'm on parole, Lenny." I said, "I don't need it." Yeah. And he said, uh, "Well, how about if I wear them, you run the security for them?" I said, "Oh, I don't, I don't know, because mm -hmm. like if I'd run it, well, I did run it." But I wouldn't expect the lads to do anything I wouldn't do myself. Mm. Anyway, we get, and I tell them, I went, went to the office, and um, they, they said to me, how are you? How are you? I said, well, you, 
Will you do the security orders? I said, oh, I don't know. She said, we'll double your wages today. I said, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight away, yeah. yeah. Before I finished saying, they don't say double. I said, yeah. 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 And it was a good job. I ended up, it was all right. Yeah. yeah. So you've, like, say, you, you, you're back on track and everything. I'm going to go back to the, the bouncer days and I'm like, you yeah. like, you've done 50 years. That's, that's a yeah. long time, right? So you must have seen some changes. Oh, yeah. Them. So if, if you were to pick an era, I know, which what what we would say was the best one of all them. So would you do the 60s, 70s, 80s? Between 75 and 85. Yeah, they were the best yeah. ones, yeah. 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 But you seen the different thing with the drugs as well, it was there, made Whoa, massive impact. Seen, yeah. At first, there was only a bit of smoke going about, and, of, and our first started, a bit of smoke people you tend to put the joint out that. And that was only like places like the Cobble Bar, the Grange, yeah. the only place like that. Not a lot of places had it. Yeah. And then, they uh, started to get whiz when people were getting a whiz, mm -hmm. and that made them into ten men. Yeah. Yeah. Then when the cocaine come out, oh, <laughs> we should put five stone on Groucho your foot. <laughs> yeah, I remember the days, uh, the Wesley days. I mean, that, yeah. was, that was my era. You know that there were good times in there, like yeah. really good. Do you have any regrets in making your life? If you, if you could go do back, you, would you would you do it all again? Or I'd do the doorway again, but I don't. I'd want to do the prison again because I had to leave my family for a long time. Yeah, yeah, that that yeah. was that was uh, that was the only thing what got me about the prison. Prison life's not hard, but a bit not being with my family. Listen, that, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I suppose it is hard when you think about that. Yeah, really, yeah. I was wrong there. Since it's not hard. Yeah, it is wrong when you have to miss your family like that. Yeah, it's certainly a book. Um, you're quite big on your family yeah. and that yeah. as well, aren't you? I wouldn't. I didn't want the kids to come and say, not see me in there, but to get searched and to humiliate and that. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. So like I said, it must have been a hard long time without seeing them. And yeah, it was, yeah. Oh. My granddaughter, oh, really, when I got out, she didn't know I was, that, that nipped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was hitting me all the time. And I, but she was only bad. Yeah. I said, I said well, why do you keep this after a while? I said, why do you keep hitting me? I said, what, what's the problem with you? She said, well, when you got out, she said, I thought it was Santa and I found out you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> but she was only a bad, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how's life for you now then, Mick? How are you? Great. Yeah. Great, honestly, Doing great. Well. Yeah. Good stuff, yeah. good stuff. I'm retired now. I'm enjoying it, to be honest. Enjoying it, yeah. yeah. Peace and quiet, eh? Well, no, we have the grandkids around every day, the great grandkids, it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You enjoying it, eh? I do love it, yeah. 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 I'm, uh, I'll touch up on this, Mick, as well. I'm sorry, mate. It's, um, you, you took them well a little while ago, didn't I've you? Got, I've got terminal cancer. At about 18 months ago, maybe 20 months ago, what? what what happened, I was feeling tired all the time, and I thought, it's not me, I'm always on the go, do you know what I mean? I was always working, I was scrapping my organs, you know, anything, I'd do anything to make a shilling, do you know what I mean? Mm. Anyway, I said, I'm going to have to get myself the doctor. So, I said, oh, let's, can we make an appointment? And anyway, she made an appointment, I went in, he said, well, that little blood test, he said, he said, he just, he said, it could be rage. I thought, oh, right. Mm. Anyway, so off we go, so anyway, two days, and he phoned me, he said, can you come in and fetch somebody with you? I thought, ooh, this sound too good. Mm. Anyway, but me and I last went, and um, he said, I'm sorry to say it's cancer. I said, all right. I said, how will we fix that? He said, we can't. He said, it's terminal. I said, well, how long have I got to live then? He said to me, well, I, 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 he said, I don't know. I was a piece of string. I said, in your opinion, how long have I got to live? I said, yeah, you need to tell me to set me start out. Mm -hmm. He said, two and a half years. I said, right, that was 20 months, 20 months, 20 months ago this month. And, um, yeah. When I went to get my blood done for it, I seen the doctor, and you know, this is how he explained it to me. He said, how I explain, how I explain to you, when you get the nine, nine points on your blood, he said, that's when you get end of, end of life tablets. He said, yours is 8.7. Okay, that's so close. Yeah. Thing, yeah. Anyway, I said, all right, what do you do now? He said, we're going to give you chemotherapy. And they got down to 7.6. Mm -hmm. And then somebody told me about this oil, so... Mm. I got some stuff, this lad and this other lad made the oil for me. Mm. And uh, I tried that. In three months, it brought it down to nothing point two. Fucking Nothing man. point two. No pain or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's about nothing point four now, I think. Mm. Or four, nothing point four, nothing point six, which you could have that much in your body. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's not, not nothing yeah. life threatening or anything like that. So it's just, it, it, right, I, we learned about this a bit earlier on, like, there's a lady I know who lives not far. Yeah, you I won't say her name. Yeah. She'd be, she'd be frightened. The case. Yeah. <laughs> She's on the same special yeah. oil, 
and as it's, you know, it doesn't uh, grow or it's, it's, it's just stabilised yeah. and everything, yeah. so That's it's going to work. He said it's still going to kill me, he said yeah. it'll, still, it'll still be the end of you, he said, but I might be a bit longer than I thought. Yeah, yeah. good. Well, I'll tell you what, Mick, I've got uh, at my, uh, you know, battling this, going full well, end with it, you know. You he, can't give in, can you? No, no. Yeah. I've never been a defeatist, never. Yeah. And that's not my dream to get in this haven't. Do you remember? Mm. Yeah. I think my me, me dad breathed down to me. Win yeah. all the time if you can. I mean, the, the dad thing, I, I, when I read read it, I couldn't. It, it was it was quite hard to read, to be honest. Yeah. And I'll say. It was quite hard to go through. <laughs> <laughs> it was. And I'll say that the people who are watching this, you, you've got to purchase. I'm sorry, I, we don't have the copy with us. Yeah. But you've I'm, got to, I'm meant to fetch it and yeah. for it. Yeah, well, we've got. Uh, if you, you've got to read this book because it's it's really really good. Jamie Boyle has done a fantastic job yes, with as it, well, honey. and uh, it is. It's a really really good book. So we'll 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 go back to prison. Like the, your father passed away when you were prison as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, we never, I never mentioned that. Yeah, he? yeah, he did. Yeah, mm. and then they let me out. Well, then sort of took me. Obviously, you're in chains when you go. Took me to the funeral, but the only reason I went was to get out of prison, okay. or I wouldn't have went. <laughs> So like you say, your, your father passed away while in prison. You, you went to the funeral. I, I was, uh, I was, I was your brothers and sisters with it all. No, we were just a dad. They were upset. Yeah. But, um, I wasn't. No. no. Not one bit. No. So, uh, uh, but there was. He just uh, did. He, did he ever like say that he loved you or anything like Never that? Never heard him say it. Never. Nothing. Your mum did. Yeah. Yeah. Never heard him say it. I don't even know what it meant. Yeah. Yeah. I think your mum was fighting to leave him in the end, Mick. There's no way, in them days, there's no way for him to go, was there? Yeah, that's well, it, yeah. You, you know, my mum, she had a younger brother, you know, and he got killed. And she was minding when he got killed. And um, that affected her. Mm. It really did affect her. And the family only half, half bothered with her, do you know what I mean? So she had no one to turn to. No one to turn to. Yeah. Must have been hard for her, like. Yeah, it was. It she was... had a hard life. Yeah. yeah. See, your dad, uh, he left her in the end, didn't he? Yeah, for a young woman. I don't know, I don't know, I'm not sure you like. Okay, no. Oh, and he only said one day, he said, well, I, was, I was in the line, you remember the old line pub in Lancaster Road? Yeah. I was sitting there and he come in with it. And I said, I'm going somewhere else, I can't go do them. Anyway, he sat down about, not obviously, we were a table down, but near enough opposite. And he said, this is Jean, you know, mum. I said, you can fuck right off him. I left him drink and walk out. Yeah. I thought, fuck that. Okay. Yeah. So did you ever have a, you know, like, beer together out like that, like father and son beer? Did no. that never, ever yeah. happen? No. Yeah, no, it was never going to happen that like. Yeah. If you lived to be 200, it wouldn't have happened. Okay, no. Yeah. That's a lot of resentment, like, in it from... Yeah. Uh, just... I don't resent him, it's just, he's just nothing to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Nothing at all, I don't, I don't hate him, I don't love him or nothing, he's nothing to me. Mm. Yeah. There's a, there was a low point as well, we, we mentioned, me and, between me and you, was a... It never got put in your boat. Was no, okay. it come to a, a bad point? I think you. Yeah, four, I, four I was about fourteen year old. Yeah, and um, I don't know how you're talking about this, but I'll tell you. Right, yeah. like, I was about fourteen year old, and um, I just had enough. There was nothing I could do to please him. Nothing. I was living really lucky. I couldn't go home. If I went to my grand's. He'd bash it. There was nothing. He just. He had me boxed in. He. I just nothing. I, I just couldn't do nothing. I couldn't do nothing to please him or nothing, and then. Um, I walked up the railway track, I had a little, little dog head with me, I had that with me, and I thought, oh, fuck it, make end it. I stood in the railway with me back to the trains coming, just shut my eyes, just stood like that, and thought, just need this to be over quick. Anyway, the arm went on the train and I brought me to my senses, and I got off. There was nowhere near me to train, do you know what I mean? Mm. I had plenty of time to get off, but uh, I think that arm wouldn't have done, you know, I wouldn't have moved. I don't think I would have. Fuck, yeah. It must have been bad, like for you, you know, be like yeah, that. Well, that's when I thought he's not winning. That went in the street. And as soon as I got down that room, I went. I thought that old bastard is not winning. That's what mm. went from my head. Mm. And he never. After that, he never won. He never. He couldn't hurt me no more. Nothing. Yeah. So he went numb to it. To be honest, sir. Yeah. yeah. So you say, but but when you're going back to the doors, do you think the upbringing and like the way your it dad was, you think that? Yeah. 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 So, so like. You going through that as a kid, nothing could. Yeah. Do you know, this sounds that very good. This is this. You were fighting with somebody, right? Mm. And I could see a picture of him in front yeah. of me. That's what I could see, yeah. Fucking hell. That could have been dangerous as well, couldn't it? Yeah. Dear yeah. me. Fucking hell. And then I told you when I went to prison, they, um, 
the lady who had to deal with me, like the psychologist, she asked me to write down, this is how the book came out, asked me to write down my life as far back as I could remember, and I did. Mm -hmm. And um, I never thought about it, I just gave it what I wrote down. I'm not, it just went out of my mind. Yeah. And then um, the day, the day, no, the day, be, I thought it was the day I was going to, was the day before on the night, on the tea time, before I was going the next morning. She came and gave me back in a folder. I said, what's that? She said, that thing you wrote down, I thought, I don't want that. Mm. Anyway, I'd left, I left it, with, went and packed my stuff, we just put my property, and then I went home. I was putting a box under the bed, and was there for about, I don't know, about 18 years, something like that. Just pulled out and pushed back in when we were clean. Anyway, this day, oh, that said me, oh, get rid of that fucking jewelry key, I said, right, <laughs> So that was part of it. And now Raven said to me, that's my, my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. She said, what's that? And I showed her, she read it. And then um, the same day, Richard came down to visit me. Mm. And he phoned Jamie Boyle, and Jamie Boyle called me, said, um, we'll do a book if you want. I thought, well, Just, I, I thought, well, have I got to put on a book? Yeah. yeah. It's, to make it, 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 the book is absolutely fantastic, really, is I mean. I've read a few books and that is really, really, really yeah. good book actually. But so that, that, that little bit of paper you, uh, was it psychiatrist made you write in prison? Psychologist. Psychologist yeah. made you write in prison. Yeah. Got hired under the bed for yeah. years. Yeah, 18 years. 18 years and yeah. come out. And now you it was were, going in the bin, that's where it was going. And now yeah. it's turned into a, yeah. a, a, a book what's selling massive. I am not on the best day of my life to think anybody would want to read about me. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's, it's an interesting life, lads, you know, like you say, 50 years on the doors, that speaks for itself. Yeah. Especially, like you say, Harleypool, it's, it's a fucking rough town, I've mate. I've had some bad nights. <laughs> I bet you have. Yeah. I've had some bad nights down there. <laughs> but it's, uh, it is a really good story and it's it absolutely... I just... Um, where are we at on here? I've been, I've been home some nights, you know, when I'm going to open the door. And trying to open the door because your hands, you know, you sell your box, your hands get stiff, don't they? But yeah. And it needed a day to. Yeah. Couldn't open it on, I said, open it on. She said, Well, you want to? I'm recognised being that much, battered that much. Fucking. Yeah. Did, did you ever come to a point where you went, Fuck this, this fucking door works? Fuck. Never. Because it was no. just like, uh, my dad nearly beat me. Yeah. Right? Nearly made me submit. And I thought, Nothing else is going to do. Yeah, nothing else had phased no, you after no, that. Nothing. Yeah. Fucking hell. And I've had some fucking good old bats as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your worst memory on the doors then? If you if you go back, you must have, obviously there's going to be some good stories on yeah. there, but you ever had a really bad night? Um, let me think the worst night. Yeah, I've had some, yeah, I've had some bad nights. You get there? Oh, I got stabbed. Stabbed? Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. 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 Well, well, what happened there then? What? Um, the, hold on. There's a couple of chewing on, they went out. I didn't clip them or nothing, I said, get out, you're not, you're not coming back, and I said, you're out. But I'd only bash them out for a week. Yeah. Because if you think about it, if I bash them out forever, there's going to be no trouble, and I'd have no job. Yeah. They kept me in a job, I loved every one of them. Yeah. And I didn't, and I can honestly say, everybody who fought in, in, that, in where I worked, I never ever disliked them because they kept me in a job. Yeah. Me and the lads who worked with me, they kept us in a job. Yeah. They didn't realise that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they did. Okay. And then. Um, I got, uh, I'd, I'd been to 42nd Street and I was, I went home and I just got through the gate and my pickup was parked in the garden, I transit pickup we had and there's loads of wire on it, you know, while I was taking the sale and then I had this noise because I was on the corner house and the house is like, a bit, like it's that way, there's a yeah. big garden here, bit at the front and a bit at the side here. I went around to see what the noise was, I was always someone trying to nick me wire. Anyway, I just got round that. Oh, someone did me. I thought, what the fuck? But I fell to my knees. They did me with a baseball bat on, on the back of the head. Fucking hell. And I went down. And they hit me again on the legs and in the ribs with it. And, uh, oh, and in the face, pushed on my face. And uh, all I can remember seeing was this lad's trainers. And you know the back of the trainers, the bit on the back like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. He painted I... the white. Right. right. I'd never seen them like that before. Tra trained the white thing like that. There were black trainers and he painted that white. And that stuck in my mind for weeks and weeks. And I was working in the Grand Hotel downstairs. Oh, was that a uh, bottle of bar or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Working in there. And these three lads come in. And I just noticed that trainers, I thought, that's him. He's one of them. Do you remember the trainers? Yeah. Yeah, so I watched him go to the trolley one day and I didn't have fucking give it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was sorry, he bumped into me that night. Okay. Yeah. But no as sorry as I was, the night they got me, they did hate me that night. Like, yeah. Yeah. 
Is that the one of the worst ones you've yeah. had? That do you think? Yeah. 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 Um, another time in the Anna, no blondes. I was sorry, blondes. Mm. In blondes. And these two lads still been in the way. Showing on. So I pushed them out the door. I said, "Go on, get up, foot off." Anyway, they, they went. And they were shouting all the time, yeah, we'll be back to see you. You know they're not coming back. They'll yeah. do it there and then. Yeah. It's just a bit bravado, bravado with them. Anyway, that was all I've forgotten about. Mm -hmm. And I went to work in the, the next weekend. I went to work in the Alma because I'd be a bother. And I stopped the lad. I said, you're going blonde. It's quiet in there. I said, no, I'll come here. Anyway, these two big men come in. And I said, any carry on tonight, lads? You'd be bad out of here. But like I said, it's only a week. I brought the lad them up because I needed them to come in. But yeah. to keep me in a job. So... One of them was stood at the bar and he came up and he said, Mick, let's forget this. And he stuck a fucking glass straight in my arm. Oh. Can I have uh, marks on that, I don't know. No, is that there, back? Yeah. Okay. He stuck it straight in my arm. I thought, that fucking bass anyway. I bashed him and his brother, it was his two brothers it was, and I bashed the brother. There went, that was champion. The next night, I was working on the other. I was just stood in the doorway like that and someone, poof, a fucking big brick hit me in the head. <laughs> He's dead to him. Hey. Anyway, anyway, I looked and I, I, I ran up and couldn't find him. I went to the hot dog and I said, have you seen them? He went, Mick, they're under my van. <laughs> <laughs> they crawled under the van out the way of me. So I just stood in the door, so I stood there about two hours, so it was raining as well, you know, it was wet. They were fucking drowned. They didn't, just didn't go for ages. didn't come out, no. <laughs> no. Fucking brilliant, fucking brilliant, man. So you made some good friends in, in on the I doors made, as well. Made some great friends, yeah. yeah. Like I said, it's Richard Arsley. Yeah. Um, Andrew Keenan, he's a good dorm to work with. Keenan, yeah. Excellent lad to work with. Yeah. Um, it's Philly Philly, yeah. Philly Torben. Philly Torben. Yeah. Yeah. But well, we still see each other. Philly, yeah. Algie and me. Yeah. You know, so I sometimes I go to the ship, you know, but I'm, I'm not a drinker. I'd rather have the lamb and soda. You know yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I'd still enjoy myself, would not I? Yes, you yeah. still go and have a laugh with the lad. Yeah, yeah. Well, you always have some good uh, tales to tell around the table oh, in a pub like this. Oh, I've three times over. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you some, I'll bet you some. But uh, I, yeah. I meant to ask, uh, I mean, I'll put this on, well, you come out of prison, I'm going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, that's it. But, um, you come out of prison, what was your relationship like with um, Terry? Terry. After, well, after you out of prison, I mean, did his get on well or...? Well, he came, I was working at Steve, he came to see me and he said, Mick, I just wanted to, to, to apologise. I said, what's done is done, Terry, I, have no, I don't owe no grudge. I mm -hmm. said, and I don't, it's, we still eat my age on the grudge, you know, it's yeah, too yeah. short. Yeah. Anyway, that was all right. Then he started to come up out of his tree on the heroin and I, I just told him, I said, you can't come up here like that. Mm -hmm. I said, anyway, that, that was all right. Then we'd never seen to for months and months. Mm -hmm. And then, I, what was I doing? I was doing this summit. I was outside my son, I did a pick up at the sand, and his son, Cheeky, came to see me. He said, Mick, will you go and see me dad? He's in hell of a mess. He said, he said I think I'm going to lose him. And he, was, with, with, he said it was with the other one, but I don't know if it was. But I went to see him. And um, I went to the house, so he said, oh, here, Mick. And I seen his number 10 for on the floor. And I just thought, he said, what the fuck am I doing? I've done in there 20 seconds. He said, what the fuck am I doing in here? Mm. And I said, I've got to go up and I've got something to do. He said, well, you haven't been here very long. I said, no, I'll tell you, I've got something to do. I said, I'll call back later. I had no intention of. I just wanted to be out yeah. of there. Anyway, and, I, and then I walked the front door. I walked the front door, I walked back, and I said, you know, Terry, there's an old saying, isn't it? God doesn't pay his debts in money, and I just walked out. Oh, okay. Is yeah. that the last you really seen him? The part from I seen him in the shop, and um, he was on about take he just died. Mm. And he was on a... I looked that kid, you know. Mm. And... Uh, he was on a TK and what he said, I'm not repeating because I don't want his family to hear it. Yeah, okay. And what he said about TK, I thought, that's me, you're doing, I'll never speak or I'll look at you again, and I haven't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no. Yeah. Mad and out, yeah. how tight you used to wear, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's running around together, getting up to all sorts. Oh, we're all together. Yeah, I mean, okay. I'd say, say it's, it's quite a bit, of, yeah. and you broke about it, you know, yeah. and um, it's safe to drift off and yeah. end up the way it is. I suppose that all, all partnerships dissolve with eventually. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah, yeah. I don't hate Terry Richard, I don't hate him or nothing like that. Mm. I just don't want to do yeah. yeah. It seems like you've got a, you know, your life's uh, turning on for the better, yeah, you know. It is end. a lot better. Yeah. yeah. I'm pleased, man, yeah. I'm pleased. Well, that's it, retired now, we just do what we want now. Yeah. Yeah. Feed up and enjoy it. Well, the grandkids running around there. Oh, the great grandkids, <laughs> look, when they're 10, 10 it's, it's only three. Oh, it's a topper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love him to bits. And Ollie's a little there, I love him as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
So how many, how many grandkids have you got now then? Ooh, I'm doing no fingers. Um, <laughs> that many? Right. Chris has got one. Mm. Our Paul's got three or four. Then he's got step, step, I've got step grandkids. Mm. Be about 16, 15, 16. Jesus. Yeah. Well, my, my mum says, like, she said she like, loved me and my brother. She yeah. went, but when your grandkids come along, it's a different, it's a different sort of, yeah, she said that's is. a different sort of love. You, you won't understand it if it happens. Yeah, I yeah. hope it doesn't happen anytime soon, because my lads are getting old now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, she said the same, it's, it's a totally different love yeah. you have for your grandparents. It is different, it's like more solid, I think, you, is that the, I think yeah. that's the right word to use. Yeah. I don't, I love my kids, obviously, mm. but uh, well, Do you I think was married with Paul, you know, and then... Um, my son, he lives in Scotland, he just phoned me up and said his mum's died. Well, I was married to her, you know. Mm. But that part of my life was over and done with a long time ago. Yeah. But uh, I, I do feel for him. Yeah. He's a good kid. Yeah. yeah. So you've obviously a really good uh, dad, granddad and everything, aren't you? So you, you... Well, you best have skin that. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you say, from the upbringing you've had, yeah. you know, to... I could never be like my dad. I couldn't yeah. let me answer my kids. I couldn't do it. Yeah. No. Oh, fair play yeah. to you, mate. Fair play to you. I could never... Let, or it'd kill me if my kids thought of me like I thought of my dad. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. it would destroy me. Yeah. Yeah. So what's uh, what's the plans now then? Is there another book coming out then? Oh yeah, we've got the same one. It's about all the funny people we've met in our life. Oh like, yeah, that'd be good. Right, my dog. Oh, it, it is. We've fucking rolled about laughing just the bits we wrote down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, honest. <laughs> is it just about every family you people know in the town mentioning it? Yeah. Honestly, everybody's <laughs> mentioning it. Then there's number three coming out in the summer. Yeah. And number four, I don't know if there'll be any more that, I don't know. Are these all uh, Jamie Boyles, are they? Yeah, all oh, Jamie, yeah. yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't leave him. Yeah. You know what I mean, we like him. Yeah, he's, yeah. He, he's, he's, like you say, we, we mentioned this earlier on, he's doing a cracking job, he's, he's got 20 odd books out yeah. now, I think. And, uh, yeah, he's had me on the Sean Atwood show. Yeah. He's had me on there. Um, I, I, I watched that, actually, it was a really good podcast, yeah, yeah, it's really good, really good. Stevie Wraith. Mm -hmm. um, and he's done a few on me. Yeah. yeah, he's a he's a nice fella, nice man. Who's it, Stevie? Uh, no, no, Jamie. Oh, Stevie Jamie. Probably is. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, if yeah, enough. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he he's a cracking bloke. Like yeah. you say, when I, I started doing this this podcast, um, I think your name got mentioned in that. And I mean, I I heard your name years ago when I was a kid when I was mm. a tour rag, and you know you you know you like when you go with your pals and you're a little bit of a yeah. way tickets and. You, yeah, yeah, the name, movie. yeah, yeah, the name mix. So I think, ooh, ooh, like yeah. that. But I, honestly, mate, it, it, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Oh, yeah, and honestly, I, I really you. thank you. It's been brilliant. No, thank and, you. Uh, I wish you and your family all luck in the world, man. Yeah, I wish the same to you, mate. Yeah, thank you. Now know. they say, I'll think he, you've got to buy this book. It's absolutely fantastic. Mm. It really is a good story. So, uh, Mick, honestly, thanks for coming down again. Thank you. Cheers, thanks buddy. for having me. You take care, man.